Awesome. So welcome, Mr. Headley. Welcome to, um, what do I want to call this? I want to call this my, uh, I do a thing called Money Mondays on my Facebook page. And I wanted this conversation to be valuable to my clients, as well as anybody who is watching on YouTube later on, anybody who gets to watch the replay. Um, this is my client, one of my clients, Trevor Headley, sold him a house. Oh my gosh. When was that, Trevor? How much years now? Uh, 2007. Uh, right before the crash. So perfect for this conversation. So I want to introduce Trevor Headley because he's a unicorn. He's a unicorn because he has nothing to do with real estate per se and everything to do with being a an assistant principal in the New York school system. Not just New York school system, the city of New York school system, which is a totally different school system than New York State school district system. So Trevor Headley is a unicorn. He has done this phenomenal thing, which I wanted to present to you all because a lot of people think it's a misnomer and I want to make it real for you and for you to know that if you choose, this is a possibility for you. You can pay off your mortgage early. It just gets to be super intentional. And Trevor has done that in his life and he's agreed to share what has transpired for him and how he was able to do that and a lot of stories he's a funny guy so i'm super excited to, <laughs> to have him here with us to share uh his journey and to just give you um i don't want to say hope i want to i want to say he's going to give you the steps to possibility all right trevor take it away tell our right. audience something about yourself Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. Uh, well, of course, I'm Trevor, and one of the things I did, I work, I did. That's because I am retired. Okay, happily retired. <laughs> so, one of the things I did, I worked as an administrator in the New York City Public Schools, as Lorna outlined. And while I was doing that, uh, I ran into one of our old clients and he was encouraging me to come and live uh, up in Orange County, come and live up in his way. And I said, okay. And he said, hey, I have a client, sorry, uh, a broker who can, you can work with and so forth. And I met Lerna. And since then we have continued to, to uh, maintain our contact. As a matter of fact, in a couple of days, Lorna is going to have a birthday. So that much I know. My wife reminded me, I think it's the 22nd, right? Or, in November, November. Mm -hmm. Oh, November, right. Mm -hmm. So, well, so I know Lorna is going to have a birthday in a short while, in a month, about a month from now and so forth. So that's the relationship we maintained throughout the time. Uh, let me tell you what I, I thought about purchasing properties prior to now. I looked at buying a house, not just to live, but I also looked at it at some moment in time for an investment purpose. And I did have a property in which I, I had for investment purposes. And then I sat down and I looked at it and I said, you know what? Ah, I don't want to work too much. So, so that went a different direction. But wait a minute I, before you go on, before you go, yeah. before you go on, because because I just heard it just now. So you own the property because I want them to track what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So whatever they get to hear, they get to hear it loud and clear, right? So you own a property before yes. you actually bought the house with me. Correct? Yes, yes. I, Got as it. a matter of fact, I owned two properties prior to purchasing the house with, with okay. you. Uh, one, I did not have, it went to someone else. Okay, so uh, that was uh, a family home at one time. So uh, I left that. And when I left that in 2000, and and uh, seven, sorry, 2005 or thereabouts. We just had about 12 years left to pay off on a mortgage that initially was 
a 30 year mortgage, but then refinance down to a 15 year mortgage after a few years. So, so uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the importance of refinancing. Awesome, okay? awesome. Because I love this conversation already, but I don't wanna get too far ahead of myself. So, so you had property before, um, and what I'm hearing you say, which I didn't know, is that it's a pattern for you, what you have done. So yes. this, this is my friend, yes. why you get to teach this stuff. I keep telling you that, but you're not listening to me. However, <laughs> uh, because you, what I heard was that you did it before with, uh -huh. the, with the prior house, the prior family home, mm -hmm. and now you're doing it again, the second again. time yes. with, with the family home. So this is obviously a pattern for you that you figured out that works, right? Yes, because so, I... Uh huh. So, the intention behind you buying, did you have the same? So, let me rephrase the question I, I mentioned to you earlier. Mm -hmm. What was your, in, I was going to ask you, what was your intention when you purchased the property, right? This time, what was your thought process behind purchasing this time? The, the, okay, so let's fast forward to learner's time. The purpose yeah. of purchasing the property was strictly for family purposes. Okay. That's it. It was just the family, a family home. So when I purchased the property, I said, okay, we're going to have the property. And the interest rate was an exorbitant uh, number, 6.7 something, whatever the case is. But we have to remember whenever we go to to purchase a property, we try to get our, our uh, FICO score, you know, you know the FICO score uh, above 750. We try to maintain that, uh, that score because if we do not, one of the things you find is that, hey, they're gonna charge you uh, a higher interest rate. The other thing is, it makes it a little more challenging for you to, to get that mortgage because they kind of push you and those those brokers out there, well, not, not real estate brokers, real estate talking estate about brokers. mortgage brokers. The mortgage brokers, they yeah. kind of squeeze you and they kind of take as much as possible out of you. So you have to be careful and be aware of, of that. Now, wait, wait, wait. So I want to ask you a question. I know you're running fast because everything is in your head. I, mean, I want you to share everything, right? But I want people to get it again. I want people to get it. So when you came to me to start looking for your home, right? Mm -hmm. Was your, was your FICO score 750? I think, yes. I think I had a, a, a great FICO score. And of course, you know, you look, we, we, a lot of times people try to, one of the things I never, I hated and I still hate. And my wife, I think she hates it, hates it twice as much is one, paying interest and two, having an inordinate amount of, of credit cards. A lot of times we go to the store and we take a credit card and oh, we take all these store credits and what you find is that that impacts on your FICO score because they're not looking at the amount of, of uh, money because you might have 10 credit cards and each credit card is, is, is $10,000. So what you only spent on each credit card, $100. So that's $1,000. They're not going to look that you only have $1,000. They're going to look at the availability of funds that you're going to have. So when they go to calculate your FICO score uh, or credit score, as a matter of fact, I keep saying FICO, so your credit score, they're not going to just use the amount that you have on that credit card. They're going to use the amount that you have access to. So, so we have to be careful about going and getting all those those credit cards and so forth. It, it does not make any sense. Uh, get, uh, for instance, I, I, I get American Express, and I'm not suggesting that anybody should get an American Express. I got an American Express and uh, a couple other credit cards, but uh, American Express allows me to get additional points. So if I want to travel, uh, so I can use the American Express. But 
American Express pays me to use their card because every time that I want to do something, some things, uh, I, I'm, I'm refurnishing my house. I'm doing something. I'm doing my cabinets. I went to the store. The cabinets cost ten thousand dollars. I'm not going to buy that credit. Uh, uh, those cabinets on my credit card unless I have the money to pay American Express. So all I'm using the credit card for is the purpose of accumulating the points. So exactly, those, those are some strategies that we can use in terms of managing our money. And oh, okay. Sure that somebody else does not make interest on you. Mm -hmm. While we're talking, no. let's, you, you, you want. But that's a, that's a whole other segment we can yeah. go into on but credit cards. No, but that's why I wanted to jump into to, to mortgages and talk about the mortgages and, and some of the things that we can do with mortgages. Mm -hmm. For instance, I the, the property that I'm living in, as, as I indicated to you, I started paying the, the uh, mortgage in January of 2008. I bought the house in uh, November. The 2007. And here it is. I started the payment in in in, in uh, January of two thousand eight. Mm -hmm. so there it was, a thirty year mortgage at a six point seven five because those interest rates were crazy. And I took the mortgage and I, I kept going. I kept going, but then they brought down the interest rates again, at least by two points. Mm -hmm. So I was able to refinance, although, you know, we had some challenges and they have some of the banks that, that gives you a hard time. And one of the things I did, I picked up the phone and I called the president's office for the bank. And I, somebody said to me, uh, okay, let me see if I can help you. I said, no, I want to speak to the president. And he said, listen. Tell me where it is and I'll see if I can help you. And I spoke with the, with, with the guy. He was an executive in the, in the bank. And he set me up to make certain I got a refinance. Although I went to a few people, one that uh, Miss Lorna knew and <laughs> they tried, Nothing. You know, so, so what do you think, what refinance. do you think? What do you think? What do you, what do you, um, I don't, uh, the wrong question. What did you say to him? What did you say to this bank executive? Yeah, so he was like the protector of the, the president. But I yeah. love the fact that you even had the balls to say, I'm calling the president and didn't think yourself any less than to be able to have the access to him, right? The thought process of that, that's, just so powerful because most people don't even think they think that oh the president you know it's the president the president is not going to talk to me or whatever and don't even try is my point right so you you said i want to talk to the president and this executive came on and he's he's you know i'm sure you know in his power thing right what did you say to him in your power when standing in your power what did you say to him that allowed him to stay on the phone with you, have the conversation, hear you out, and created a way for you to get the, the, the information and the and what you really wanted. One of the things I knew uh, that uh, when I made an effort to refinance and how many mm -hmm. times and how many people and who I spoke with. Mm -hmm. So when I was talking with that person, I had that information and I said, listen, these are the things that's been happening and I have not been able to refinance my property, although the interest rates are different. My FICO score is fair and I want this refinance and I cannot get it. And I am tired of what's going on mm -hmm. with your bank. He said, look, I'm going to put you onto somebody and I can assure you we will get it done. I said, you want me to trust you? 
<laughs> he said, yes. I said, okay, I'm going to give you a chance because okay. if I have to call back and I'm going to give you this time, I gave him a specific time that I wanted done and so forth. So when we did that, he got in touch with the other people, whoever he put me onto, and mm -hmm. voila, I got done. it refinanced. Done, done, done. All right. So I just want to reiterate, ask for what you want, because that's what I'm hearing Trevor do. He didn't stop until he got what he wanted. He wanted his house refinanced. He had a vision to pay off this mortgage. And that's why he, he had a vision to have a lower interest rate, right? He did what he had to do mm -hmm. to keep his FICO score at a rate that would support what his requests. So when he got the right person to support him in getting the refi, it just happened because he did what he was supposed to do. So now- that was the first. A, that was that was the first refi. I know. I'm getting there. I was okay. going to ask you. Tell us what you did next. next what was the next so, step? So, mm -hmm. so I had already looked at it, and it was four years after the 30 year mortgage. So mm -hmm. I had 26 years on the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So when because the interest rates were low, I was paying approximately the same amount of money for a 20 year mortgage as a 30 year mortgage. So I knocked off six years rather than taking the money out because we have the impulse to say, okay, I'm gonna take the money out. But for four years, you're accustomed to paying a certain amount of money. So why would we take the money out? No, I reduced the, the time and by virtue of reducing the time, I also reduce the amount of interest, of course, that I'm going to pay to the, these guys. Okay, Trevor, you're talking too fast. That's only because I know you and I know the process. <laughs> you got to slow it down, slow it down, because okay. a lot of people aren't used to it. So let me, let me, let me rephrase what you just said. Mm -hmm. So the second time, you refinanced? No, the first time I refinanced, mm -hmm. I from 26 years, I brought it down to 20 years. Great. Then with doing so, mm -hmm. right? With doing so, you did not pull money out of the house. Mm -hmm. In other words, you did not take a check from the bank you simply refinanced the terms of the loan. Yes. Meaning you changed from a 30-year uh, uh, mortgage to a 20-year mortgage, mm -hmm. paying the same amount. It wasn't because you wanted to lower the payments of your 30-year mortgage. It was strategic. In, low, in lowering the amount of years you got to pay the loan. You didn't mm -hmm. change the amount that you were paying. You changed the time. Yes. And you didn't pull equity out. No equity. Which would have actually increased the time. Yes. Awesome. What did you do next? What did I do next? I continued to pay the mortgage. And then it happened uh, in 2020, 2020. Mm -hmm. One of the things, the interest rates went down astronomically. So rather than a 4.5 or 4.6 or whatever interest rate I had initially, I now was able to bring it down to 2.5%. And still paying the same, same amount. Uh, yes. So let me track it again. 20, 2008, you, you went in with a 6.75 interest rate, just around there. I remember mm -hmm. it was really high. 2020, 2008, I'm saying, to, well, 2007, 2008, you went in with a 30-year fixed rate of 6.75%. Yes. Four years later, you refinanced to a, a lower rate. Four years later, 2012. Yeah, what was the interest rate? 
it was about 4.7 or something or 4.6 whatever it was it was like two percent less two percent so two percent less two percent less shorter term same payment mm -hmm. right yes now you're at 20 years then to 2020 that interest rate went down again almost another two percent yes you kept the 30-year payment right mm -hmm. and now how much time do you have left on that mortgage how much i mean how much time from 2020 to now i have well based on what i'm going to do i'm going to have about two months of payments left <laughs> So what I'm hearing you say is that you paid off a 30 year note in what are we in 2012, 2022. So you paid years. off 15 years. Yes. I mean, bravo. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. You're my first client outside of paying off a mortgage if we sell the house or you know something like that or if we buy another house or something you're the first client that i'm aware of who has actually done that and and actually accelerated it because typically it's known in the industry if you pay an extra month of payment on the principal of any any term you're going to pay off the mortgage in about seven years earlier but that was that's just the pain down the principal this mm -hmm. strategy is an i'm going to call it the accelerated mortgage it payment. was accelerated now one of the things that uh i understood especially in the final uh, refi is that strategies for us to hold on to money when you refinance the mortgage, they give you, and, and I did not understand that until recently, they call it a courtesy period. We normally would say a grace period, mm -hmm. but they call it, a. the banks refer to it as a courtesy period. So they're going to give you a courtesy period of approximately a month. Keep that money. Don't spend that money. Don't say, well, okay, I got extra money. They give you a courtesy period. Keep that money. The other thing is, when I went into refinance, I knew that they give me a courtesy period, not a courtesy period of 15 days before I pay the mortgage. Normally, if your mortgage is due on the first, they give you up to the 15th or 16th to pay that mortgage. So what I did, I made certain that the refinanced my note mm -hmm. before the 16th the my refinance date was the 15th because i told them i want to refinance this time because mm -hmm. you have to know what it is you want so because i knew that they were going to refinance on the 15th i did not pay them that month or more that month of mortgage and i i'm not telling you you should do that but that's what i did i knew that okay so i'm gonna hold on to that fund so i held on to the funds mm -hmm. okay so now i have that first month then i have the next month so that's two months of mortgage and that mortgage also includes the escrow. So right. now it's even more. So when the first payment came in December, I looked around, I had some ravelings and so forth. I had some savings and I was looking at that 0 .0%, 0 0.01%. And as a matter of fact, I was doing some calculations the other day. And I see that if you have $20,000 and you save it, put it in a, a note or a fix a CD right now. Excuse that, that's 0.1 or 0.2%. You only making $300 over a 30 year period. My, so my thing was, hmm, rather than hold this money, I took some, some money in addition to those two payments 
and the first payment I made towards that 10 year mortgage because I refinance now because it was a 12 year mortgage. It was 12 years left and I refinanced 10 years because they wouldn't give me less than that. So I refinanced the 10 years and I took some money and I made that payment, that first payment. So immediately upon making an additional like $15,000 uh, towards the principal. Principal, be clear, not just a payment. It was towards the principal. Right. Got it. It was directly and only towards the principal. And I'll mm -hmm. give you some additional information that you have to look out for. I paid it towards the principal. It knocked off about $7,000 in interest that I would have paid to them over a 10 year period. Mm -hmm. Powerful. So I can take that $15,000 and put it in the bank and over a 30 year period or 15 year period, you would not make that kind of money. So, so I knew that. And one of the things I do, I did, I use something very simple. I use Excel and Excel spreadsheet and create a loan amortization schedule. So when I plug in that money, I know how much interest I, I am saving. Right. Now, you have to be aware of what they're doing because when you give them that money, they have the impulse to utilize your money the, the way they want to utilize it. So what did they do? They paid two months of payment and they said, hey, the next time you have to pay us is February. I got in touch with them. No, I don't want it like that. I want you to pay the money to the to the principal only. Mm -hmm. One month, the second month, they did this, they, they had it the same way. I called them up again and I said, hey, fix this. And then the third time, third month, it's still the same problem. Mm -hmm. So I called them up and, and said to them, stop being a pack of thieves. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, you guys are stealing my money. I said, because right now you are getting an extra $1,700 in interest from me. My principal should be X amount. I said, fix it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because I knew what the interest rate was. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can do that is if you use the loan amortization schedule in your in your uh, Excel spreadsheet, and everybody have have a computer, everybody have access to an Excel, and once you use that, you will be able to 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 see what's going on with your 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 loan amortization. Yeah, yeah, that's powerful. Um, and I, think, I mean, one I think, of the things I would have liked to do is share a, a loan amortization screen with you and let you see how it works. Well, maybe what we can do is, um, how long is it going to take you to do that? Uh, a minute, two minutes. Okay, hold on. So I can do screen share real quick. And maybe what you can yeah. do to support whoever watches this, um, we can add that as a gift. To them, the amortization sheet, add it as a mm -hmm. gift, a PDF, like I can make it a PDF or something like that, and attach it to the video so they can download it for themselves. Well, I, I you see, one of the things I, I I agree with that, but what I want is not for people to just look and see what the PDF does, because I can do it in a PDF. What I want people to be able to do is take the loan amortization schedule and play around with it and see what's happening. And if you give them extra money, you're gonna know what your principal is gonna be. You're gonna know what interest, because mm -hmm. over, over this, when I had a 30 year mortgage, the interest would have been about 400 and something thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the things I did, I was able to save paying those, those guys mm -hmm. 200 and something thousand dollars. Yeah. 
that's that that's that's a lot of money like if if okay. they went back and looked at that amortization sheet they signed off on when they that first day they they bought the house there's that mm-hmm. spreadsheet you know you paid like you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the house and that sheet that says you now owe uh, like a million dollars mm-hmm. uh at the end of 30 years that's the kind of thing Trevor is showing you how to adjust so that it works for you. So yeah, Trevor, we can, we can offer them the sheet either as a PF, PDF or the Excel spreadsheet. They just mm-hmm. get to recreate it in the same format. That's all. So you now have the ability to um, yeah. share screen if you'd like. Okay. So it says here, uh, who can share? Okay. So I want to share this screen. Uh, I have that one. And here I say share. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Now, and this is what you call a loan amortization schedule that once you do a, a new, once you come to to Excel and you you go to your file and you say new, okay. Here it is. It 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 it. Well, I have it here. It allows you to create a loan 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 amortization. If you do not see the loan amortization here, because I went and I said loan amortization and I searched for it, okay. It allowed me to 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 find that and do the and create the information okay Okay. so it's it's all here and it's in excel and you can do that now what do you do you come in and you say what your loan amount is what your interest rate is and the length of time the low the loan period in years and the number of payments you're going to make and when it is you're going to start making those payments. So if you look here, uh, it's 12 1 2019, and it tells me how much, uh, what my scheduled payment is going to be. Now remember, the scheduled payment is not is not does not include your your tax. ex escrow mm-hmm. it does not include your escrow so you have to be able to to see that mm-hmm. so this is only what you owe the bank this is what is owed to the bank the escrow is the escrow so it's going to give you 120 payments it tells you how much your is going to go towards your principal because this is your total payment for each period. The amount that goes to the principal and the amount that goes to the interest. And it tells you that for 120 periods. Here here is your 120 periods. Now, you see, you remember I said to you that that extra payment of $15,000, how that well, mm-hmm. you owe them a total interest of $30,000. Look what is going to happen with $15,000. If you keep that money, okay, the, the money that they owed to you, mm-hmm. sorry, uh, I, I said that they owed to you. <laughs> the money that they gave you as a courtesy period, those two courtesy period and the payment times and so forth, and you hold on to that money, you come up with some money. Look what is going to happen with the interest and the amount of loan payments that you have. All of a sudden, that interest knocks off uh, $5,000 and eight months payments. Eight months of payments, it, it, it's gonna you know, reduce. So, okay, your, your payment period by. So now it's uh, almost 11 years. Okay, so if next month you got some money, something happens, uh, somebody gives you some extra money and you got another 10,000 and you put that 10,000, all of a sudden it's 14 months that it's reduced uh, reduced by and your interest rate again goes down. 
It tells you the amount of early payments and it tells you here it is, $6,000, whatever the case is. And it's important to realize the earlier you make those payments, the more impact you're gonna have on the amount of interest that you have to pay. Okay, so when you say the earlier you make those payments, because I wanna make sure they understand what you mean by that. Mm -hmm. So the earlier you make those payments means that the time period that, that you have typically between the first and the 15th of the month is when you are uh, graced, is that period you get to pay your no, mortgage? No, that's, that's, not, that's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking so, about in the earlier in terms of when you have that mortgage, when you took that mortgage. Oh, that mortgage, you mean when you initiated the mortgage? Right. So, okay. For instance, look, I'm going to go down. Here it is. You have a hundred and something payments. And I'm going to come down to like uh, 90, when it's in, in 90 payments. Look what's going to happen. You see $24,280. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take $10,000 and put $10,000 in. Mm -hmm. Look, Look what the impact is. Okay. It's just about $500. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I take that same ten thousand dollars and put it in the beginning, when it's in the beginning, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, and I put it here. Uh oh, I put in a hundred thousand there, and I put it in the beginning. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Two thousand additional, change. right? So th mm -hmm. th those are the kind of things that we we want to look at and be aware of, and. The earlier we can do that in the, in the in the in the in the process, the more impact that fund is going to have on the amount of interest. Because when you go down to ninety payments, you would have already paid all the interest. That interest, you know, the, mm -hmm. all the interest here, you would have already paid about twelve, thirteen. Look, look how much interest you would have paid over that. Let's go to ninety. So here is ninety. I would have already paid twenty one thousand dollars in interest, almost twenty two thousand dollars in interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. You want to, you want that interest, and in order to get that interest, you got to be able to give them the money upfront early. early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. I so love that. That's because that's you, some, mm -hmm. you saved about ten thousand dollars already just by paying. Um, paying the interest up front. Now, pay, actually, it's more that, than 10, those 000. extra payments up front. extra payments up front. Yeah. So, yeah, so like that's that's such a good thing to point out because, like, you know, a lot of people get some big, big tax return money, especially if you're a teacher or, or a nurse um, or um, I won't say doctors. It depends on how they've been paying their, 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 their corporation taxes. But teachers, I know, nurses are a big one. Um, they get a lot of big, big tax return checks at the beginning mm -hmm. of the year. This is a good way for them to reduce interest payments and pay off mortgages faster because yes. uh, they get such large checks and do it right when they just buy the house. Because these nurses, they buy a lot of big houses with a lot of, you know, a lot of big payments and uh -huh. they work these 12 hour shifts and, and uh, really are killing themselves to pay these mortgages. And they don't know this kind of information that could support them to pay it off faster so that they can actually um, get a little bit more rest and do something else with their money. So Trevor, we're just about at the end of mm -hmm. our time together because you have so much information. I'm going to bring you back on. Um, tell me what's next for you. What's next for you? Now that you're retired, you're almost paying off your mortgage. <laughs> what are you going to do with all that money that you, you you're going to be saving? Well, one of the things we, we kind of do is, and, and a lot of times people look at it in, in such a way that I, I just want to make a note here because one of the things I wanted, I, I would show you at some time, how, 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 how are you affected, affected for when you pay an additional E-F-F-E-C-T-E-D, affected when pay one additional mortgage per year. 
we're gonna call this one the accelerated and then when you come back on you could share mm -hmm. yeah share that one you, you could stop the screen share if you'd like yeah yeah okay now what am i going to do mm -hmm. they got some things that some projects that we did in the house and those are projects that we needed to have them to, to make certain the house is nice and fine and so forth as you are aware we mm -hmm. i did my cabinets and i did my counter and so forth mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. going and get those items now waiting for somebody to buy the materials to me you remember when you came and you look at my countertop and you said oh how much you pay how much uh, how much for, uh, for, uh, for a square foot Mm -hmm. And you thought like $120 when I only paid $65 per square foot. I remember. And, mm -hmm. and the fabricator was trying to con me after he, after he got it because I went directly to the to the to the uh factory, Manufacturer. the manufacturers, and that was able. So now we're gonna look at projects that hey. What do you want to do? You want to do your windows now? Uh, you want to do your basement now? I, I have funds that I can go and do whatever to improve the house because those are things that I did not need to do at that time. Mm -hmm. So it's better rather than uh, uh, incurring a cost and paying somebody interest, I can do them now and pay them cash. Cash. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. What a great way to end the conversation. Just right. to show people that, listen, this is all possible. It just gets to be intentional. You get to know what you want is what I heard Trevor say all mm -hmm. through this conversation. You got to know what you want. You got to really go after it. You got to ask for what you want, you know, in this conversation with the, with the bank executive, he asked for what he wanted. If you don't ask, you won't get right. And don't assume that because somebody else didn't get it, you're not going to get it. You got to exactly. ask for what you want. You know? don't, depend on, don't, don't think about other people because in all of this, I also received $9,200 because they think they were smarter than I am. But they, 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 they even the bank gave me a, a credit of $9,200, but that's for another time. That's yeah. for another time. But do know that it also supported him paying off this mortgage yes. in 15 years. So thank you, Trevor, for popping on and sharing your story with You're the so audience. Um, yeah. I hope this was valuable to you. Go back and rewatch it. Share it with your family and friends who have mortgages, um, who are thinking about buying a house so that they can at least get some of the information going in right so they mm -hmm. can set up themselves for success and if you know anyone who wants to buy or sell a house i'm here to support them i do have a team that backs me up and trevor will be back with more juicy information isn't right. it great to be just so generous to share this because a lot of people don't know this information and we decided that you guys get to know so thank you for watching and see you, you on the next one all right